Ladies and gentlemen, today is Wednesday the 8th of June and today, much earlier than anybody expected, Mojang released Minecraft 1.10. This is the Frost Burn update, also called the Fire and Ice update. My name is Sliced Lime and this is going to be a comprehensive look at all of the things introduced and changed since Minecraft 1.9.4. Now this update is a much smaller one than the move to Minecraft 1.9, but this is still going to be a fairly long video, so I've split it up into sections. You can skip ahead to one of the sections by clicking its label at the top of the video. We're going to start with the added blocks, then take a look at new mobs and changes to mobs, changes to the world generation, gameplay and options changes, We'll go through all of the new sounds added in this update and then end off with a section about technical stuff, commands and map making changes. So let's dive right in and talk about the new blocks, starting with the bone block. This is a block that can be crafted from 9 bone meal and then broken apart into 9 bone meal as well by placing it alone in the crafting grid. The block can be placed in different direction and has a darker core than a shell. The remaining added blocks are all related to the nether. There is a magma block. It can be crafted by placing 4 magma cream into the crafting grid, but it cannot be broken apart once you have the magma block, it is a magma block forever. The magma block has a completely new behavior when it comes to light level. It will take the light level of its surroundings and it will replicate that light level. So if you have a torch right next to it, the magma block will be bright as a torch. And once you remove that torch, it will remain at the light level that it is. Magma blocks also do damage when stepped upon. They do one damage per second, that is half a heart per second, of damage to mobs and players, but not to items. This damage does not happen if you are sneaking, if you're wearing Frostwalker enchanted boots, or if you are under the effects of fire resistance. If this damage kills you, there is a new death message. Player name discovered floor was lava. And if you get chased onto magma blocks by a player or mob, the death message will be player walked into danger zone due to and the player or mob that caused it. At random ticks, a magma block will remove any water on top of it. That includes both flowing water and water sources. And if rain falls onto a magma block, it will smolder and give off smoke particles. There are two other craftable blocks relating to nether wart. First, a nether wart block crafted by placing 9 nether wart into the crafting grid. This is also a permanent block. Once you craft it, you cannot get your nether warts back. This is simply a building block with a red texture resembling that of the nether wart. There's also a red nether brick block. It is crafted by placing two nether bricks and two nether warts into a crafting grid in a checkerboard pattern. It is a slightly lighter colored nether brick block with a more red saturation level. Let's move on to mobs. There are several new mobs added in and they are added in the hot and the cold places of the Minecraft world. Let's start with the cold places in ice plains, ice mountains and ice spikes biomes. There are now polar bears that spawn as passive mobs. They can spawn in adults and with cubs and they are by default neutral. However, adults will be aggressive if they get hit or if there are cubs around. And if you hit a cub, it will run away. If you kill an adult polar bear, it will drop fish or salmon. In the same cold biomes, there is also a new type of enemy. It is called the Stray, it is a version of the Skeleton. And whenever the game attempts to spawn a skeleton under the sky, in these biomes there is an 80% chance of that skeleton being a Stray instead. Strays look different, they wear tattered bluish clothing, but they act very similar to skeletons. They shoot arrows just like normal skeletons, but those arrows are slowness arrows in the case of strays instead of normal arrows. When they are killed, they can drop at most one slowness arrow, regardless of the level of looting used. Note that strays can also spawn as spider jockeys. Moving from the cold parts of the world to the hot parts of the world, in deserts and the variations of desert biomes, 80% of all the zombies spawned under the clear sky will turn into a new type of zombie called a husk. The husk is very similar to a normal zombie, it's slightly taller but has the same hitbox. 
it does not burn in sunlight and when you get hit by a husk that is not holding any item you get a hunger effect and the duration of that effect depends on the local difficulty. Husks can also spawn as babies or even as chicken jockeys. Those were the new mobs but there's also changes to the existing mobs. In the nether, endermen can now spawn, although they are just as rare here as they are in the overworld. However, magma cubes are now twice as common in the nether as before. Some mobs behave differently as well. Witches will now drink fire resistance potions when taking fire damage. Skeletons can now fire different arrow types if you put a different arrow type in their offhand. They don't use up this arrow but will keep firing arrows of that type. And finally, wolves are now counted as passive mob spawns which means they no longer despawn, even when untamed. Let's move on to talking about the world generation, there's some very exciting changes to that. Mesa biomes can now have surface level mine shafts. That's a feature that's been ported in from Minecraft Pocket Edition. These are roughly at sea level rather than lower down, and they are made up of dark oak wood instead of regular oak wood. Mesas also generate gold or at higher levels, between y equals 32 and 79 to be specific. In deserts and swamplands and the variations of those biomes, there is a 1 in 64 chance for each chunk to contain a fossil. The fossil is a pre-made structure made out of bone or coal ore. There have been large changes to the village generation. Villages are no longer restricted by biome borders, so a savanna village can spill over into a neighboring biome. They generate in taigas now, but not in the variations of the taiga biomes. And those villages are adapted to fit into the kinds of materials that are available in a taiga biome. The same thing goes for savanna villages, they are now made out of acacia wood. Blacksmiths in all kinds of villages have now been changed, so they have cobble around the lava pit instead of other materials. One big change to the generation of villages is that the paths inside the villages now look better. They use grass path blocks instead of gravel when the village is on top of grass. And wood planks are used to bridge over water or lava, except in desert villages where smooth sandstone is used instead. There's also a new danger. There's a 2% chance of a village becoming a zombie village instead of a regular village. This village is filled with zombie villagers instead of normal villagers and it has no torches or doors. When a huge mushroom generates, it now has a 1 in 12 chance to become a really huge mushroom, twice as high. This goes both for the normal world generation and when bone mealed by a player. Plains biomes can now contain trees. Around 5% of the chunks will now contain some oak trees. There's one change to cave generation as well. Previously, if a cave generated to where it would have a sand ceiling, those blocks would be changed out with sandstone. That is no longer the case, so caves can now have sand ceilings hanging in mid-air. This is also complemented by another change, where any gravity affected blocks hanging in mid-air, not supported by another block, will emit a particle downwards so you can see that it would fall if updated. The nether also has one world generation change, there are now magma blocks in the nether, generating close to lava. Let's move on to gameplay changes. The auto jump feature from Minecraft Pocket Edition has been added into the PC version of Minecraft. When you upgrade, auto jump will be on by default but it can be switched off in the controls menu. When approaching a block that could be jumped onto, auto jump will automatically trigger a jump, making the game easier to play with a restricted control set which serves to increase the accessibility of the game to players with disabilities. There are many more small changes to gameplay that are still worth mentioning. Shields can now be shift-clicked into the offhand slot, a small but convenient change. And together with this, dispensers can now equip shields onto players. Fishing rods have had a very interesting change. They could previously be used to fish, of course, but also to pull mobs around. That has been extended, so you can now use them to pull items towards you. If you activate an end portal with a solid block inside of it, that block will now be replaced by the end portal. Ender pearls and chorus fruits can now teleport you away from your mount if you're riding, so be careful with that. The firework rocket recipe has been changed. It used to give you one rocket, it now gives you three. And one final fix to gliding, if you were gliding on a litra and you relogged, then you would fall out of the sky when you logged back in. 
This has now been fixed, so when you log back in, you will resume your flight. The debug screen, F3, has had a new addition done to it. If you press F3 and G at the same time, you will get a new debug mode. This debug mode shows you outline the borders around the chunk you are currently in, which gives you a nice way to find the borders of chunks without having to look at the numbers. So let's move on to sounds. There are new sounds of course for the new mobs, but also for some other things. The new polar bears have some sounds. They have sounds for cubs when they are idle. Sounds for the adults when they are idle. Step sounds. A roar when attacking a player. Sounds for taking damage. And the sounds for dying. The new enemy husks also got new sounds. They have sounds for idling. Walking around. Taking damage. And dying. And as a final mob update, the strays now also have sounds for idling, for walking around, for taking damage, and for dying. But that's not all, there is also new sounds for opening and closing ender chests. Enchanting an item in an enchanting table. And last but not least, two new creepy versions of the nearby cave sounds. The final section is going to be about commands and technical blocks for map making. And first of all, of course, let's start with the second technical block added into Minecraft in addition to command blocks. This is the structure block and we could spend an entire separate video on it, and we shall. But for now, its purpose is to store and load structures similar to what an MC Edit schematic or a one command contraption could do. They have four modes, a save mode, a load mode, a data mode and a corner mode. The save and load are fairly obvious, the corner mode is used to automatically detect the size of the structure that you want to save, and the data mode is currently only usable by Mojang to make the built-in structures work. Structure blocks also have a companion block in the structure void blocks. These are small invisible blocks that are only meant for use inside of structures, where they indicate that a space is not supposed to be filled in at all when the structure is being loaded. However, they also seem to have some other uses, in that they can't be replaced by player, but blocks can be placed against them. They also stop water and lava from spreading, but you can walk through them. As for commands, the particle command has gotten a new particle, it is called falling dust, and it is the same particle used to indicate that gravity affected blocks are unsupported. The parameters for falling dust indicate which type of block it is supposed to originate from. A new command has been added, it is called slash teleport not to be confused by the old slash tp. Slash teleport is provided with coordinates and does seemingly exactly what slash tp does. The difference is that slash teleport is executed relative to the current command execution position, just like most other commands. This makes it easier to teleport things relative to other things. And talking about teleports, the slash tp command used to have a limit of teleportation in height between negative 512 and positive 512. That has now been extended in this version to be negative 4096 to positive 4096. There's some relevant NBT changes as well. Primarily, the no gravity field is now available on all types of entities, not just armor stands. There's also a new fall flying NBT tag that can be used on all living entities. Setting this value to 1 means that equipped wings will auto deploy, which is used to make sure that players don't fall out of the sky when they relog, but is also usable to make mobs fly around on wings. The husks and strays have led to new additions to zombies and skeletons. There is now a zombie type NBT that replaces the old is villager and villager profession tags and simply indicate what type of zombie it is. It has a new value, value number 6, indicating a husk. The skeleton type for skeletons also has a new value of 2, indicating a stray. Area effect clouds also have two new fields, they are called particle param 1 and particle param 2. They act exactly the same as the parameters sent off to the slash particle command. 
And so we have reached the end of our comprehensive look at the changes for Minecraft 1.10. If you haven't specifically changed your version in your profile in the Minecraft launcher, the next time you start the game it will automatically upgrade to this version and you too can enjoy the new things in Minecraft 1.10. I hope you found this video useful and if you did please help me out and leave a like on the video. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.